Hello YouTube. I was sitting around thinking this would be a pretty cool video idea to do. Um, basically just a basic guide to steel chainsaws. Uh, steel seems to be the really the only brand that I've ever mechaniced on and really worked a lot with. I've run Echo Saws before and I've run Husqvarna Saws that was my neighbors, but this has been the only brand of saw that we've ever had. Um, this is a MS-170. I bought it brand new about two years ago. And then this is a Super 29 uh, that my dad bought probably at least 14 or 15 years ago. Uh, both have been really good saws, but they haven't been used a lot. Uh, they've just been used just to around here cutting up firewood and cutting up brush and things like that. So we're going to do a basic guide on steel chainsaw maintenance. So stay tuned. So now we've got the chain covers off of them. Let's take a look and see how the chain's set up on a chainsaw. Now this part is very important because if you miss this step, your saw will not cut. So let's kind of take a look and see how this chain is set up. Now if you look here all down throughout the chain, you see what's called the tooth, and then in front of it you have what's called a guide, or some people call them dogs. Now the purpose of the guide is to not allow the tooth to cut too deep, or not allow the, the tooth to cut too shallow. The guide has to be the perfect height below the tooth at all times. If the guide is too short, the saw will pull too much. But if the guide is too tall, the saw will not pull enough. It'll just kind of just sit there and just rev up and the tooth will not get a grip. Now, if you look at the direction that this chain is going, of course, this will be the way that the saw will turn. Now, your guide has to be in front of your tooth because if your guide is behind the tooth, that would mean that your chain is on backwards. And trust me, they do not cut that way. Now, one of the best ways to sharpen your saw or to work on your saw is put it in a vise. Now, be very, very careful whenever you put one in a vise. The only thing you want to do is snug it up. You don't want to just crank it down because you don't want to bend anything inside the bar. Let's also talk about chain tension. Now, chain tension is a very important thing, and what that means is how tight is the chain on the bar. Now, right now, this chain is actually fairly tight on the bar, but I've seen some guys that they'll, their chain will be slacked up up to here. And that's just asking for it to slip and then come off and maybe cause some damage to you or the saw. Now, the idea goal is to make sure that when you raise it up, you can get about two dimes stacked in between that tooth and the bar right at my finger. You don't want too much that it'll bind the saw, but you don't want it too slack that it will slip off the bar. Now, while we still have our saw in the vise, let's talk about sharpening real quick. Now, I'm not going to make this video about sharpening because sharpening could be a whole video in itself. I'm not the world's greatest sharpener, so I don't really want to do a video over it, but I can get by. Um, I'm just going to show you some basic tools and show you how important the right tool is. Now, this small file right here, this small file fits perfectly within the groove of that chain tooth. It's for the smaller chain. Now, when we come over here and we start looking at the bigger chain, we have got a bigger file that fits perfectly in that groove. Now, remember earlier I was talking about these guides right here, or otherwise called as dogs. Now, this was kind of a chain that I had kind of ground down that too much. I had filed down the dog too much, and my chain started wanting to drag. But what you really want to do is you really just want to take real light movements and just barely grind that down. Do not take large portions at a time. But, like I said, I'm still learning. I made mistakes. So we're going to go ahead and change this, this chain out on this one. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and change the bar and chain out on this one. Um, it's never had a bar on it, and uh, the chain on it's kind of getting a little rough, too. So stay tuned, and I'll show you how to get these things off. One of the coolest things about steel chainsaws is the majority of them all use the same size nuts to get the bar off. Uh, every steel chainsaw comes with what's called a chainsaw tool. This is for your, your bar, uh, to take your bar off, the two nuts on the side. I'll show you them in here just a second. And then another end is for a screwdriver end. One is to open up the gas cap, one is to open up the fuel cap, and then the other use for this is to tighten up the chain. Now, of course, this is on the smaller saw, but the other saw is set up exactly the same. Now, we're going to take our chainsaw tool, and we are going to put our chainsaw tool on these two nuts right here, and we are going to go ahead and completely remove them if we're wanting to remove the chain. So we've went ahead and got the cover off, and the first thing you'll notice is it's pretty dirty. Um, now, of course, it's a saw and it's used, but the first thing we need to kind of do is clean all this mess up. But while we're in here, I want everybody to take a look at this. Now, this is your sprocket. This is what actually drives the chain, but underneath here is the clutch. Now, the way the clutch works is as the, you are just idling, the clutch is kind of compressed like this. But as you give it fuel, the clutch expands, all right, and it starts grabbing the outside, which is this, all right, and it turns the chain. But now, remember, the clutch is not attached to this outside, so if the saw hit a 
say for instance, a rough spot in the wood or something like that, it'll just bog the engine down and not destroy everything. Uh, that's part of this clutch assembly. So let's go ahead and get this whole chain and bar off. All you really gotta do is just lift up and everything just comes off. Just go ahead and get you just a little screwdriver and just start cleaning out all these areas around through here. And you always sweep them up later. Now, this is kind of what tensions your chain. If you see here, there is a screw, and there's a hole in the bar, and what it is is your bar sits on that hole right there, and the more you turn that screw, the farther back it goes, kind of dragging the bar back or dragging the bar forward, and the more forward it is, it'd be the tighter it is, but the more back it is, the looser it is, but it's all determined on that little peg right there. You can kind of see some threads. Now this one little piece right here, you never ever want this hole to get stopped up. This is what's called your oiler. The chain rides up against this and oil just randomly drips out uh, as long as the engine's running, as long as the saw's going. And this oil drips and it cools and lubricates the chain. If this is stopped up, your chain will burn up. Now your saw and cover doesn't have to be perfectly clean. Um, a saw that's kind of got sawdust stuck under it is kind of a good sign because at least that means it's oiling. Now this is the funnest part. Seems like whenever they come into the box, they're tangled up 14 million different ways. Now remember I was telling you about that little peg right there that's got the threads on it? Now that is your chain tensioner, and the chain tensioner pegs go in either one of these holes, so that way, you know, in case you do want to flip your bar upside down or change directions, you've got a hole for either way. Now I'm going to take the tension off of this just a little to make sure that it goes on easier, and I'll show you how to tighten it up once we get everything on. So we've got our chain on our bar, we've got our chain on our sprocket correctly, as well as the tensioning peg, and now we're ready to put the cover on. So we got our cover on, we put the two nuts on, and I tightened them up, hand tighten as much as I could. But from that point forward, you have to be very careful because both these nuts have to be tightened up exactly the same. If this front nut is tightened up more than the back one, then the saw could pull crooked because the bar may not be straight. So like I said, it's very important that these have the same amount of tension. Now it just so happened, the, the way that I had the tensioning peg, I think my old chain had got a little loose and the new chain, of course, was tighter and my tension looks like it's just fine. So I didn't do anything, so I went ahead and cranked the nuts on down. Now, like I said, I kept them even and you don't have to go ham on them, okay? You just need to snug them up and make sure they're tight. Now, if I need to tighten the chain, if I use the chain that gets loose, I need to back these off about two turns a piece and make the bar just loose enough that I can turn this to tighten it or to tension it and then tighten these nuts back. So we got this little saw ready to rock and roll. Now let's work on the big guy. Let's see what we got in this box. Ooh, baby, new bar. Now if you look, even though the saw is a little bit bigger than the other, still is the same exact setup as the smaller saw. So let's go ahead and get this bar off the same way we got the other one off. Our trusty, not rusty, chainsaw tool. So if you guys look, of course, this saw is a little dirty too, but you'll see that it has the same two studs right here. It has the tensioning peg, and then it has the same type clutch. Let's go ahead and get this one cleaned up too. So I'm gonna kinda of tell on myself in this video. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, I bet we've had this saw for at least probably 14 or 15 years. And looking back at this saw, I can definitely tell some mistakes that I made. Now, the reason that this paint is gone off this bar is because chances are I tried sawing with it when it was dull and it got way too hot and the wood pretty much just burned the paint off. But whenever I was 12, 13, 14 years old, you couldn't tell me anything because I knew it all. Uh, but as I go back and as I look at my mistakes, I can definitely tell where I fall short. Uh, but I think that's a big part of life is learning from our mistakes and I've definitely learned with this one. Now, one thing that is different from the big saw compared to the little saw is the way you tension the chain. Now, of course, the peg's still the same, but I remember on the little saw, you had the screw out here. But on the big saw, the screw is right here, and you get to that through this little hole in the cover. All right, so we've got a new chain on the little one. We've got a new chain and bar on the big saw. One more thing that I kind of want to show you that a lot of people get tripped up whenever they start working with steels, and that's the correct starting procedure on a steel chainsaw. So follow along and I'll show you how to start one up. First thing you need to do whenever you start one up is make sure that your chain is locked. 
your chain break should lock the chain. Now, as you come down here, it's kind of tough to do, but we're gonna push down this lever and we're gonna pull back the throttle and we are going to put this plumb down to the very, very bottom. You may have to take two hands. Now we got it. Now we're gonna crank on the very, very bottom selection until we hear it go boom one time. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna notch it up. Just one notch. Now, of course, I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes, but remember, we're gonna go straight down all the way. We're gonna crank. Until we hear it hit one time, and then we're gonna flip it up once. Now that starting procedure is the same, at least for every steel saw that I've ever ran. Seems like as long as you always go down to the bottom, hear it hit once and then throw it up one time, it should fire every time. Thanks for watching, guys. I know it seems like a lot of basic knowledge to some of you guys, but for people who's wondering about steel chainsaws, that was a pretty good little mini basic guide. I couldn't hit everything because I would have been here all day, but like I said, that was the basics of changing a bar, new chain, and how they operate. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe.